So we'll be going to our third speaker in the person of Dr. Justine Jermo, and I'll be introducing her. She's the president Cameroon Academy of Young Scientists and a member Global Young Academy. Um, her bio, Dr. Justine is a plant biotechnologist and researcher at the Institute of Medical Research and Medicinal Plant Studies. IMPM, Ministry of Scientific Research and Innovation. Her research interest is tissue culture of medicinal plants for beta domestication and production of secondary metabolites. She received the prestigious fellowship UNESCO L'Oreal for her PhD study in US at Tropical Research and Educational Center, University of Florida in 2011 and at Alabama A&M University in 2013. She also received many grants and prizes, and she's a member of the steering committee of INGSA Africa. She's also been involved in training and supervising many students for internship and their master's thesis. And she is the president of the Cameroon Academy of Young Scientists and member of the Global Young Academy. So let's welcome Dr. Justine. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh for the presentation, Victoria. I am very happy to be part of this, uh, this panel. Um, I just, first of all, thank the organizer. I thank especially my brother, Elijah Odai, for the invitation. Um, I will present uh, with the PowerPoint, but it will be organized on your side there because I will try to minimize uh, interference. I will also switch off my camera. Okay. So um, my presentation will be on uh, advance of food, in, uh, of food security in Africa through plant tissue culture biotechnology. So I will talk generally about food insecurity. I will present some solutions, especially related to tissue culture then I will emphasize in some work I did in the laboratory, and then I will conclude. Slide, please. When we talk about food security, we also think about food insecurity, meaning that population have no access physically, socially, economically to good food. So when I talk about, when I talk about good food, I mean a food who is safe, nutritious and socially acceptable for the well-being of the population. As we all know, food is among the basic needs of the population. And when it's lacking, imagine how it could be challenging. So 50% of acute food insecurity is in Africa. It means that one uh, fifth, please don't move yet. I will let you know. It means that one fifth of the population face hunger. This, um, this was in 2020. And the data of Center for Strategic Studies show that many African country, can you go back please with the slide? Okay, thank you. So that many African country face uh, acute uh, food insecurity. We, if you can see the slide, we, we, we realize that mostly in East Africa, followed by the Central Africa, then West Africa, and finally the South Africa. According, next please, according to the Food Agricultural Organization, uh, food insecurity could be categorized in three, in three parts. Acute food uh, insecurity, meaning that hunger, malnutrition, and the lives of the population are threatened. So we can know the, the period of famine that exists sometimes in many countries. Occasional uh, food insecurity, it happened occasionally according to some circumstances, maybe some crisis, and chronic food insecurity, like the, it's constant threat to access, access the food. Next, please. So when we talk about food security or food insecurity, it's, a, it's very complex because 
It is linked to many aspects of the life, food, nutrition, healthcare, agriculture, industry, transport, infrastructure, policy, politics. So it's also paradoxal because we can see, for example, in Africa, we have about 60% of the world's available land, Arab, but we produce just 10% of the global agriculture output. So that's why I'm talking about paradoxal. One of the main reasons that we can see is that food insecurity is really linked to the instability of a country because when there is a country in a country, when there is a, a conflict in a country, we can see the market are disrupted and many development policy towards the, uh, the, 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 the vulnerable population. Uh, is, uh, I, I mean, there's disrupt, it, everything is disrupted, even the policy toward uh, vulnerable population. So we can see that the price, uh, uh, the, the food become expensive in the market and then it really affect the population. So what to be secure, to have food security, we need to be sure that the food is available, the food is, food is accessible and also of good quality. That's why, sorry? Is it okay, please? Can you hear me, please? Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay, yes. okay. okay. So that's why uh, a part of the solution is biotechnology. Slide, please. What is biotechnology is the fact to use biological system or living organism or their component to develop or create product. What I just say, it's simply like biotechnology is technology based on biology. So this can help alleviate the situation of food insecurity. We have different types of biotechnology. We have yellow, yellow biotechnology. We have yellow biotechnology, which is food and nutrition. We have blue biotechnology related to marine and aquaculture. We have industrial biotechnology, white biotechnology with industrial which is industrial biotechnology, everything related to industry, green biotechnology related to agriculture and environment, red biotechnology like medical health and diagnostic. So what we'll, uh, we'll focus more on agricultural and environmental uh, related to biotechnology, so green biotechnology, because it's offer a large scope of opportunities to increase the productivity to develop and diverse the agriculture in a sustainable way. Also, uh, green biotechnology has been a revolution to the conventional method of agriculture. Slide, please. Our main focus will be on tissue culture. Tissue culture is a tool used in green biotechnology. So it's a technique of growing cells, tissue, or part of a plant or organism in an artificial medium in an aseptic environment. So during the process, the part of the cell use or the tissue can give directly a plant or indirectly via what we call sometimes somatic embryo. So it is, it, for it to be successful, the technique needs to be mastered well, mastered very well. At each stage of the development of the plant, it needs a specific treatment in terms of adding some specific nutrient or adding some, some growth regulator to allow the plant to grow better, or to develop better. So to address food insecurity, next please. We need, slide please. To address food insecurity, we need to uh, uh, use tissue culture. We can use tissue culture because it has many advantages. Like we can produce plant material. It could be uh, a with every type of crop. We can produce it in a short term period. We have some species who, which have um, uh, recalcitrance problem during the germination, meaning that 
to let them grow, for example, the seeds need to spend at least six, six months before open up and grow. So with tissue culture, we just open it directly and put it in a control environment for it to grow. It reduces considerably the time of production. Um, we use few parts of the few amount of land material, meaning we can use just a part of the leaf, leaf a part of the seed for able to produce another type of plant. It gives uniform plant production, uniform production of plant, meaning that when we have if, when we have a, a tree, a tree who is attacked with a special diseases for able for, for uh, and produce very good uh, like plant or fruit, whatever. So we can use tissue culture to produce the same type of plant, but a healthy one. That's why we can say this is free plant also. So production of high quality and quantity plants. So we can stimulate a special active component in a plant so that the, in, in the S plant, so that it produces a plant with this special component that we want. Um, it's produced too, uh, throughout the year. We don't, it didn't take care of the dry season or rainy season to grow because we, we, we the, the plant is is the plan is the the plan is culture in a, in a in a control environment in the lab then in the greenhouse and then it will follow certain step before going to acclimatization out of the greenhouse so it requires more space i can imagine in my country we export a lot of banana and when we visit one day, the, 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 the industry will produce those banana. We, we find in, 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 in a small box, like hundreds of young plants of banana. So we can have the seed, we can have the plant growing in small spaces than if it was to having all the whole plant or all the, all the, all the whole plant. Uh, I mean, it was, it was in a small environment than if you have the traditional way of multiplication, you will need a, a, a bigger, a very big space. I mean, so we can have new variety and, and we can produce it in mass. So um, next space. I have here some example we did in the laboratory using Prunus Africana. Prunus Africana is actually a medicinal plant as uh, uh, the moderator say, I am a plant out technologist and I work with the medicinal plant. So we work, we use tissue culture to propagate an endangered medicinal plant called Prunus Africana used in the treatment of diseases related to prostate cancer. So the number of, of, of um, the, the, the need was going was increasing and the local population was uh, harvesting the bad way which led to the destruction of the, the plant and the plant tr was threatened and in danger actually. So in the lab, we tried to find it, the first line we find the, uh, the, um, the stem, a short stem. We put it in, in the control environment, we vary the nutrient and at the end of the day, we, we at in few like six six months, we had a short plan with, with the with with the roots. Normally, when we have to wait for the normal process, take longer time than that. Another uh, experiment we did is down there. We took like a pieces of grain of seeds that we put in an environment, liquid environment, and at the end we have production of many embryos, somatic embryos, who will give later. Uh, uh, many plants to slide, please. Another thing that we use during uh, that that we use uh, tissue culture for is the production of secondary metabolites. There are some um, there are some uh, crops like carrot, for example. This is just an example who has a lot of uh, uh, useful metabol secondary metabolites. And we can use tissue culture to just stimulate those uh, secondary material like maybe carotene and alkaloid, any, any type, just stimulate them, produce them in vitro. And we use them for pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical use or can, we can use them also for, the, uh, for food, like to supplement food with. In the lab, we work also by culture, by culture uh, some microorganism that we call mycorrhizal fungi. So what is it? What mycorrhizal fungi is, is 
type of microorganism that exists in the soil and which help the plant to extract water and mineral from the soil. And the plant also help the fungi to have sugar, like carbohydrate for their development. So they have a symbiotic association, benef uh, mutual benefic association, uh, which help the plant to grow. We use it with Prunus Africana because we, to harvest uh, Prunus Africana, we need to go to the high altitude, sometimes in forest, sometimes in mountain to have, the, to have the plant. And we realize that when we harvest the plant, we come to, for, to domesticate in the lab or around the house, we realize that it didn't grow as well as when it's in his natural environment. And one of the explanation is that usually the soil of that environment has the mycorrhizal fungi, so microorganisms that help the plant that is specific to the plant and help the plant to, 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 to have its uh, uh, hydric and mineral nutrition in the ground. So we realized that when we bring some part of the soil in our environment, the plant grow better. But it's a little heavy that each time that we need to domesticate a species, we need to go and carry a bag of soil or whatever. So we decided to culture them in the laboratory by identify those type of microorganism and then multiply it, multiply them so that when we have a, species, a plant of Prunus Africana that we want to domesticate, we don't need anymore to take the whole soil, whole soil. We just need to take few, few uh, uh, microbes and put it in the root of the plant to have the same result. A slide, please. Oh, is this one slide, please. Okay, so another importance of tissue culture uh, is that tissue culture help to conserve the biodiversity because when we can produce in mass, when we can produce in mass an endangered species or species uh, which are not endangered, it helps to conserve the biodiversity. You know that uh, we have about 0.1% of species extension every year. So uh, tissue culture also can be a tool for science diplomacy in such a way that if we look at Africa continent and what we have in terms of biodiversity, we are, uh, we are called the second land of the world after the Amazonian forest because, uh, because of the Basin, Congo Basin forest, which have the capacity to, like, to, to throw in the air the oxygen. And this biodiversity is so more rich that we can use tissue culture to make available some species and sell the production at the international level. So what, we, what I can just say is like tissue culture is as part of the green biotechnology, it's a important tools that government should need to invest to have require equipment to train researcher or technician to able to have a chain in, in many important, a chain of production in, the, in many um, uh, towards important crop of the country. Uh, slide please. Okay, um, there, is, there are some challenges that we can, that we can see but not that one, please. There are some challenges that we can see before that one. Can you hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, it's before that one. I'm seeing the last one. Okay. Um, there are some challenges that we can see, like genetic alteration, because we are using cell or part of the cell sometimes uh, we cannot, we are not able, uh, we, are not, we are not able to have the same plan as we, as we were expected. Also the lab, we need to uh, build the capacity, build the capacity of technician because there are some technicity behind the tissue culture technique. Um, uh, it's some expensive because we need equipment. We need equipment, we need uh, a good environment, aesthetic environment, and also, Sometimes the, 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 the plant produce is less resistant to the, to the diseases because 
coming from a control environment to go directly, for example, to the, to the field, facing environmental challenge, facing uh, uh, plants, other plant diseases, sometimes it's difficult for, the, uh, for an in vitro plant to grow, to grow normally. But in general, the challenge are less than the advantage that we could have to invest in, in tissue culture biotechnology. So uh, to, we can just say, and call by concrete that food security, addressing food security or addressing food insecurity or let advanced food security need to look through uh, the, the biotechnology technique through tissue culture so that we can have access, we can have availability, we can have good quality of food. I will just finish with this African thought we say that the last one, a man doesn't go far from where his corn is roasted. So from my understanding, like if we have what we want, if we can eat, we can, if we are okay with what we can eat, we will socialize better and it will be less conflict. So thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, Dr. Justin for that very insightful presentation. And it's our great joy that we are moving now into the next session. But just before we get into that,